Citizen Kane is often called the greatest movie ever made, but what exactly makes it more deserving of that title than, say, Paddington 2, which recently replaced it as the top-rated movie of all time on Rotten Tomatoes? With all the recent hubbub, you may be asking yourself, what makes some 80-year-old black and white movie so perfect, and is it really, as they say, the GOAT? <coughs> well, greetings and welcome to Screen Rant, guys. I'm Greg Elliott, and today let's do a quick dive into why some call Citizen Kane the greatest movie ever made. Xanadu's landlord was laid to rest, a potent figure of our century, Charles Foster Kane. The first thing you've got to acknowledge is that Orson Welles pretty much changed the game when it came to visual storytelling. Prior to Citizen Kane's release in 1941, most movies followed a pretty linear timeline from the first scene to the last. But Citizen Kane didn't do it that way, and similar to how Shakespeare did it in some of his plays, pretty much told the audience everything right away in the opening scene, which really opened people's eyes to the different ways that stories could be told on film. Anyway, it wouldn't have explained anything. I don't think any word can explain a man's life. Before Citizen Kane, movies generally used the camera as an objective observer, but this one brought the literary concept of the unreliable narrator into film by jumping between different and contradictory accounts of Kane's life, a technique that filmmakers even now tend to stay away from because it can be so complicated. Due to the different narrator's subjective perspectives, the audience never really gets a clear picture of who Charles Foster Kane really is. But that's kind of the point, that no one view can properly summarize one person's life and impact. The story also ends without tying things up in a neat little bow, which at the time was basically unheard of. What's the difference between giving me a bracelet or giving somebody else $100,000 for a statue you're going to keep crated up and never even look at? Just money. It doesn't mean anything. But it's not just the storytelling devices that make Citizen Kane the greatest of all time. Orson Welles may not have invented a lot of the filmmaking techniques that he used, but they do say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and Welles openly borrowed filmmaking techniques from some of the great films before him, like The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, M, and Battleship Potemkin, even admitting that he didn't always know exactly what he was doing or why. But Wells' editing is where things really came together and what really makes Citizen Kane so important. At one point, Kane's 16-year-long failed marriage is condensed into a two-minute breakfast montage. Now, today, montages and fast-forwards are so commonplace that you barely even notice them, but back in 1941, Orson Welles collapsing long, complex stories into a quick, easily digestible sequence was groundbreaking. So without Kane's two-minute marriage, we wouldn't have things like Up's heartbreaking opening scene or even, say, Rocky training montages. If you could have found out what that rosebud meant, I bet that would have explained everything. No, I don't think so. Mr. Kane was a man who got everything he wanted and then lost it. But all the editing tricks in the book can't save a bad story, and ultimately the tale of a man who valued wealth and power over everything else and eventually died alone in his big empty mansion as a result has influenced countless films that have come since. We know Kane was a thinly veiled satire of newspaper publisher William Randolph Hearst, who even tried to blackmail Wells to stop making the movie. But Wells still managed to make audiences sympathize with the man whose real-life counterpart actually tried to ruin his life and reputation, which is no easy feat. Mr. Carter, if the headline is big enough, it makes the news big enough. <laughs> That's right. Listen, they've been making movies for well over a hundred years now, and you could easily name plenty of films that are more visually impressive, more moving, funnier, sadder, more diverse, whatever, than Citizen Kane. But Orson Welles so defined the language of cinema that any other film trying for the title of greatest movie ever made will inevitably have borrowed something from it, even one like Rotten Tomatoes' highest rated movie of all time, Paddington 2. It is a bit tricky to summarize the greatest film of all time in only three or four minutes, so for more insight, please check out Cahill Gunning's great write-up on this at ScreenRant.com and keep coming back to us for more on film and TV's best, worst, and everything in between. I'm Greg Elliott, thank you for watching, and we will see you next time.